Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the BSC Limited Q4 FY22 Investor Conference Call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star, then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anand Seturaman, Head Invest Relations, BSE. Thank you and over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Stephen. Uh, good evening, everyone. This is Anand from Investor Relations. Welcome to BSE's earnings call to discuss Q4 and FI22 results. Joining us today on this earnings call is BSE's leadership team consisting of Mr. Ashish Kumar Chauhan, Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Nayan Mehta, Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Samir Patil, Chief Business Officer, Mr. Girish Joshi, Chief of Trading Operations and Listing Sales, Mr. Neeraj Kushreshta, Chief Regulatory Officer, Mr. Kirti Tavadia, Chief Information Officer. Do note that the conference is being recorded and a transcript of this call will be made available on the BSE website. Uh, before we get started, I would like to take this opportunity to remind you that our remarks today will include forward-looking statements. Actual results may differ materially from those contemplated by these forward-looking statements. Any forward-looking statements that we make on this call are based on assumptions as of today, and BSE assumes no obligation to update these numbers as a result of new information or future events. I would now request Mr. Ashish Kumar Chauhan, MD and CEO of BSE, to give a brief overview of the company's performance, which will then be followed by a Q&A session. Thank you. Thank you, Anand. Good evening. And thanks for joining the call today. I hope all of you and your loved ones are safe and keeping well. For much of financial year 2022, there was a sense of cautious optimism that, that we might finally have put the worst of the COVID-19 pandemic behind us. As restrictions in India began to ease, economic activity picked up strongly as demonstrated by the recent macroeconomic numbers. But to, towards the end of 2021, our resilience was put to test once more as the spread of the Omicron variant uh, reminded us of the unpredictable nature of the pandemic. I'm happy to inform you that despite the uncertainties, the BSE group delivered a strong financial performance and recorded its highest ever revenues of Rs. 863.5 crores in a financial year. Further, BSE's net profit attributable to shareholders of the company increased by 76% to Rs. 254.3 crores. This performance was driven by growth in transaction-based segments and stable listing segments. Uh, for the quarter ended 31st March 2022, BSE's operational revenues uh, grew by 34% to Rs. 204.6 crore from Rs. 152.2 crores in the corresponding quarter previous year. Further, BSE's net profit attributable to shareholders of the company increased by 129% to Rs. 74.5 crores from Rs. 32.6 crores in the corresponding quarter previous year. The operational performance has continued to grow across business segments, resulting in higher operational revenues and profits. On back of superior financial results, it is my pleasure to inform you that the board of directors of BSE has recommended a final dividend of Rs. 13.5 per share having face value of Rs. 2 for the financial year 2021-22 uh, on the uh, higher uh, capital subject to the approval of the shareholder in the ensuing annual general meeting. The total payout with a revenue payout ratio of 95% of the current year profit for the Rs. 185. Uh, Mr. Chauhan, yes. uh, so sorry to interrupt, but your voice is breaking up, sir. Uh, you may know uh, that BSE had issued bonus shares in the ratio of two equity shares or for every one equity share held as informed in the previous earnings call. The said dividend would be paid on the expanded share capital. On the business side, let me start by covering our primary market segment. Funds raised by India Incorporated continue to be buoyant, and BSE platforms continue to remain the preferred choice by Indian companies to raise capital. In 2022, the BSC platform has enabled issuers to raise 18.4 lakh crores through issue of equity bonds, equities, bonds, commercial paper, municipal bonds, in which, etc., including rupees 
3.1 lakh crore for the quarter ending March 2022. The total number of investor accounts registered with VSE now stands at 10.5 crores and continues to move up. This number has more than doubled in the past two years. I shall update you on BSE's trading segments now, which witnessed growth in the year ending March 2022, reflected in the operational performance in the current period. For the year ending March 31, 2022, BSE's average daily turnover in the equity segment increased by 29% to rupees 5396 crore as compared to the last year. In the equity derivative segment, the average daily turnover increased by 89% to rupees 2.66 lakh crores as compared to the last year. In the currency derivative segment, the average daily turnover increased by 28% to rupees uh, 26,672 crores as compared to the last year. In the commodity derivative segment, the average daily turnover increased by 24% to rupees 2,969 crores as compared to the last year. Like I updated in the last earning call, BS is keen on launching spot trading in gold via electronic gold receipts, for which it has the acquisite technology and know-how and has received in-principle approval from SEBI. BSC is in process of seeking final regulatory approval from SEBI to launch EGR as a new segment. Let me now update you on the BSC SME segment. I am happy to inform you that BSC has completed 10 years of operationalizing India's first SME exchange. BSC is endeavor to support the SMEs and startup in India has seen listing nine companies on its SME platform, one company on startup platform. During the quarter ending March 31, 2021, taking the total companies to 367 and 40. 14 respectively. This 367 SMEs raised 3898 crores and 14 startups raised 61 crore via the BSE platform with a market value of rupees 48482 crores and rupees 435 crores respectively as of March 31, 2022. BSE's market share in the SME segment stands at 60%. I shall now discuss our mutual fund distribution platform. BSE Star MF, India's largest mutual fund distribution platform, continues to grow at a remarkable pace, the total number of trans transactions growing by 97% to reach 18.5 crores transactions during financial year 2022 from 9.4 crores last year. For the quarter ending May March 2022, the BSE Star platform registered 5.2 crore transactions as compared to 2.9 crore transactions in the same period last year. BSE Star MF platform continues to scale new peaks in terms of single day transactions with the platform processing a high of 30.1 lakh transactions on April 18, 2022, outgoing its, outdoing its previous best single day record of 29.9 lakh transactions on uh, April 11, 2022. It also continues to contribute consistent net equity inflow to the mutual fund industry with inflows of rupees 81350 crores in financial year 2022. The BSE Star MF app launched in May 29, 2019 to help mutual fund distributors register clients on real-time basis and execute paperless transactions has processed over 56.8 lakh transactions as of March 2022. On the regulatory front, SEBI had, has agreed uh, to mutual fund industry's request to extend the deadline to July 1, 2022 from April 1, 2022 for implementing discontinuation of polling of accounts. The extension is to facilitate an efficient technology overall and its smooth transition to serve uh, growing investor needs. BSE's work is going to increase due to uh, this new uh, change that is coming up. I shall cover developments at our subsidiary companies now. BSE promoted India International Exchange at Gift City, Gandhinagar. India INX has been growing exponentially ever since its commenced trading activities on January 16, 2017, with average daily trading turnover of US dollar 10.1 billion and a market share of 92% for the year ended March 31, 2022. India NX has more than US dollar 62 billion medium term notes and bonds established and over US dollar 44 billion of bonds listing till date. I'm also happy to inform you that India NX has enabled a global access platform for investors wanting to invest in global securities. The platform permits investments in more than 30,000 stocks across 33 countries and 135 exchanges across the US, Asia Pacific and Europe. One can also invest in more than 80 global portfolios of renowned international portfolio managers with a minimum of US dollar 100. Owing to investments by certain strategic and financial investors, BC stake in India NX stands at 61.9% and 59.9% in India uh, International Clearing Corporation as on March 31, 2022. As informed in the last earnings call, India NX and India SEC have invested Rs. 6.75 crores each in India International Bullion Holding IFSCA Limited 
holding company for setting up and operationalizing the international bullion exchange for uh, 10% stake each, making it totally 20% in VSE Group, as directed by IFSCA. A uh, trial run for India International Bullion Exchange was conducted on April 18, 2022, and first trade was executed on April 19, 2022. Uh, we expect it to go fully live by the first quarter of uh, financial year 2023. This is wholly owned subsidiary BSC Technologies, is the technology solutions provider for the International Bullion Exchange at Gift City. We are also confident that the same technology which we are going to use in the domestic market for the uh, BSC's proposed. E- uh, electronic gold receipt market uh, is also going to be successful. On the insurance distribution from uh, BSE EBIX Insurance Broking, a joint venture of BSE and EBIX FinCorp Exchange is now present in all the three insurance verticals, auto, health, and life, and is integrated with 20 insurance companies as compared to 16 in the preceding quarter. In the last quarter, BSE EBIX has onboarded LIC, Tata AIA, and Max Bupa. BSE Bix has over 1,158 registered point of sales as of March 2022, of which 1,486 were added during the year. Total premium collected is Rs. 11.95 crore for the year ending March 2022, a growth of 149% over the last year. Companies recently appointed Sri Sachin Seth, a partner with Ernst & Young uh, as MD and CEO. This appointment is another step forward to establish BSE Bix as a link insurance distribution player in India. while providing the best-in-class services to our customers across the length and breadth of the country. BSE holds equity stake of 40% through its subsidiary BSE Investment Limited. BSE also remains fully committed to expand the BSE agriculture markets uh, bean platform, a JV between BSE Investments and Frontier Agricultural Platform, to set up a nationwide electronic institutionalized spot trading platform to facilitate spot transactions in both agri and non-agri commodities. It has enrolled 840 members an increase of 52 members from the previous quarter. Trades worth Rs 63 crores in three agricultural commodities, Bag, Juar, and Bajra, were executed on the platform during the quarter ended March 31, 2022. The company is working closely with the government and government enterprises to enhance the efficiency of procurement and sales of the commodities. Considering the market and opportunities, this platform is expected to grow at a faster pace in time to come in both agricultural and non-agricultural segments. As informed in our earlier call, the Power Market Regulator, Central Electricity Regulatory Commission, has granted registration on May 12, 2021 to Pran Ujja Solutions to establish and operate a power exchange. The company name was changed from Pran Ujja Solutions to Hindustan Power Exchange Limited in November 2021 to brand itself as a power exchange. We are awaiting regulatory approvals and the company proposes to commence on live operations in the first quarter of financial year 2022-23. BSE has a stake of 32.61% in the proposed power exchange through its wholly owned subsidiary, BSE Investments Limited. BSE's wholly owned subsidiary, BSE Administrative Administration and Supervision, BASL, which was incorporated in March 21, to administer and supervise investment advisors in June 21 and received approval as an acc- accreditation agency for investors in December 21, has onboarded 986 investment advisors and 35 accredited investors as of March 31, 2022. KYC uh, and KRA agency uh, for which BSE has recently got a license, uh, as well as BSE also has got a license for trade receivable discounting system trades recently from RBI. BSE Technologies is awaiting the receipt uh, of final approval and certification of license from the regulators to commence the KYC, KRA, and trades businesses. We are confident that the experience of BSE for over 147 years as a frontline regulator will help the growth of BSL trades and KYC KRA businesses in the time to come. I would also like to update you that the BSE's wholly owned subsidiary BSE investments acquired 4.676% stake in government-enabled private sector-led non-profit company ONDC Open Network for Digital Commerce Platform, which promises to be a game changer for India's bustling e-commerce ecosystem. This is a great opportunity to participate in this national initiative for digital transformation uh, and financial inclusion. Uh, ONDC is a not-for-profit uh, company. Now I shall brief you on the financial results for the year ended March 31, 2022. On consolidation basis, BSE's operational revenue uh, grew by 48% to Rs. 
to 743.15 crores from 501.37 crores. Transaction charge revenue increased by 86% to rupees 258.85 crore from 138.88 crores. Listed related income increased by 19% to rupees 220.54 crores from 185.78 crores. The clearing and settlement operational revenues increased by 108% to rupees 45.25 crores from rupees 21.73 crores. Net profit attributable uh, to shareholders of the company increased by 76% to rupees 254.33 crores from 144.90 crores. The operating EBITDA increased by rupees 174.3 crore to rupees 213.14 crores as against 38.84 crores with operating EBITDA margin increasing to 29% from 8% earlier. The net profit margin increased 20 29% as against 22% earlier. As seen over the last few years, BSE has operated with a strategy to build products and markets for institutions and investors in a manner that enables us to grow in all economic and interest rate conditions so that VSE is truly an all-weather growth story, something that does not exist in a single market or asset class alone. As we begin financial year 2023, we are better positioned than ever to capitalize on trends occurring across asset classes, and we remain focused on investing and executing on the many growth opportunities in front of us. By expanding our solutions beyond traditional business, we remain confident to deliver growth by leveraging our technology expertise, by integrating our traditional offerings to enable the many new opportunities. These opportunities combined with our deep expertise in training and clearing will help unlock BSE's longer-term opportunity in India's financial services space. With this overview, let me welcome all you, all of you once again and invite all of you for question and answer session. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Amit Saxena from AS1 Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Um, so my question was related to uh, ONDC, uh, where we have recently invested. Uh, so my question was, as this is a not-for-profit organization, uh, what interest does the shareholders have uh, in you know investing in in, in this venture? Yeah, BSE, uh, BSE is a nationally important uh, institution which works for the uh, benefit of the nation in addition to its benefit for its own shareholders. So whenever the e-commerce grows, uh, many more companies will come and list on BSE. Uh, and that's where BSE will also make profit. So it's a basically initial building activity which will in the long run will help BSE also. Okay, and then what is the amount that we have invested in here? Ma'am? Uh, yeah. How, how? We have seven and a half crores. Okay, seven and a half crores, yeah? Yeah. Uh, okay, sir, my uh, another question was related to the dividend uh, payout. So uh, this time we have... Uh, we have uh, we are distributing 13.5 rupees per share, which comes close to 95% of I think the net profits. Uh, uh, however, when I am going through the slide uh, 37, uh, in that dividend payout, it you know that there I see it mentioned as uh, for 21-22, the dividend payout is 962 million or 96.2 crores. So it it looks to me that. Probably it's a typo, or or I'm missing something. If you can just uh, dividend yeah. payout will be after AGM. Uh, uh, sir, the dividend payout will happen after the uh, AGM. So, uh, so the dividend which is being proposed will uh, 
Sandhu will reflect around for the financial year 22-23. million was what was paid last year in FI22. Got it. It's basically based on the cash flow, not the uh, or or the dividend paid out in that particular financial year. Yeah. Okay, makes sense. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the lineup, Pranav Thakkar, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, congratulations, sir, on great set of numbers. Uh, my question is related to Star MF. Uh, are are we planning to uh, make a separate listing of any of our subsidiary associate or make a divestment or a stake sale? Uh, so if you can clarify on this. Uh, we have always maintained that we are uh, always looking for good opportunities. Uh, if any opportunity comes for any of our subsidiaries, uh, our board will take a look at it seriously. And uh, whether it is divestment or any listing or a separate uh, floating, uh, all those things uh, will be looked at as and when opportunities uh, arise. But, uh, are, we, are we planning to look that in a quarter or two? And no. the efforts are being seriously made in this direction. Efforts are being seriously made, but it may not happen in one or two quarters, or it may happen in a few days also. So uh, efforts don't sometimes get results, and sometimes uh, the results come fast. Right, sir. And, and sir, uh, uh, another question is also related to this only. That is, uh, did we uh, got uh, valuation of uh, specialist RMS uh, from independent agency? And if you can share what valuation it it is being valued based on the recent transactions that are happening no we do not have any such details because you know since we are trying uh, to uh, find a suitable investor obviously there would be some valuation being done from our side from independent agency yeah independent agencies don't invest and investors don't look for the, especially in private markets, they don't look for the independent agencies' valuations. They have their own metrics. They do their due diligence, and accordingly, they do it. Uh, and sir, uh, this power exchange uh, and listing uh, can be expected to happen before June, like you mentioned in first quarter of 22-23. It's not listing. It is the operations, starting of operations. Yes, yeah, sir. So starting of operation should happen because the mock testing and all things have started. Okay, sir. Thank you. And all the best. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pratiksha, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hello. Uh, congratulations, the BSA team, for uh, showing the great set of numbers. I just want to ask Ashish sir about this code spot exchange. What is the current state of this uh, process and can we expect PSA to start uh, getting revenues on the gold spot exchange in this coming financial year? It should happen in this financial year because we are ready uh, with the technology and everything. So as and when the final approval comes and the depositories start taking the gold in their vaults, uh, we should be able to start. So it's still... Uh, probably uh, a couple of months away. But as and when it happens, uh, I mean, it's a great uh, product. And earlier also, a similar product uh, was actually traded uh, in some ways. Uh, so, in fact, uh, our uh, associate CDS also has experience of uh, handling this before. Uh, they are also preparing their technology. And so as and when it is ready uh, and SEBI approvals come, we will be able to launch it. Thanks for updates, sir. And uh, in this uh, financial, you have given this uh, high dividend, 13.5 rupees, which is also included the dividend you have received from CDSL, right? Naturally. That, what we receive gets into the total pool, and then what we give is coming out of our total profit, which includes CDSL uh, dividends. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll get back to you, too, sir. Thank you. And all the best for coming quarters. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 at this time. The next question is from the line of Chetan Shah from Abacus AMC. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, uh, hi team. Uh, congratulations on a good set of numbers. Just two quick questions, sir. One, uh, this uh, 
ONDC investment which we are doing of seven and a half crore. What kind of uh, well stake which we will be getting as a BSC? I mentioned uh, about the percentage we get. It is not for profit, so irrespective of the stake, it's not going to get the dividend. The total percentage we have got is four point seven six percent. Got it. Got it. And sir, second question in terms of the. Uh, you know, we, we spend uh, money to expand our derivative, our commodity, currency, INEX and other businesses, the new businesses uh, which are still in an investment mode or a phase. If you can give us some sense or a color in terms of uh, which are the businesses now have reached uh, closer to the break-even point where we don't need to spend money or still how much money we are spending uh, or a, or a burn rate, if you can give some color on, on all the new businesses, will be very helpful for us to understand where have we reached over a period of time. And, and, and that is the one question. And the second question, just continuing that ONDC thing, are we also going to use our technology expertise to help ONDC to achieve a nation building exercise apart from the money and the state which we are buying? Yes, please. The ONDC part is correct. Why BSC was invited is also uh, due to its technological expertise in uh, basically e-commerce. Uh, and uh, BSC is one of the pioneers of e-commerce in India due to its automated trading uh, systems and the fastest exchange in the world. Um, and in terms of the uh, investment that we have made, uh, we have made different different investments into B BSC e-agriculture markets, power exchange. Uh, KYC, KRA, trade receivables exchange, uh, insurance broking business, uh, India International Exchange. Uh, these are all businesses which are uh, yet to start making profit. But the investments which are made are uh, very limited uh, and very specific. So uh, additional investments currently are not uh, foreseen in any of these uh, activities. In terms of uh, the mutual fund platform, BSC started making uh, large uh, amount of revenues uh, for first uh, uh, nine years of its existence. BSE did not make a single rupee revenue from Star MF, but this year it has been able to make a good revenue. Similarly, BSE SME platform has started giving good revenue. Uh, derivatives, uh, liquidity enhancement scheme for equity derivatives and commodity derivatives are currently on and will continue to happen over foreseeable future. But all the liquidity enhancement schemes are taken as the cost or expenses in the specific year and specific quarter in which we make it. So we do not capitalize our uh, liquidity enhancement schemes uh, in any way. Uh, and uh, in terms of technology, we continue to invest, uh, which of course uh, is capitalized and then uh, depreciation is charged uh, on top of that. But overall, uh, in most of these uh, areas, the technology of our own or our partner firms uh, like EVIX uh, gets used in uh, setting up those markets or distribution platforms, uh, and uh, then uh, we are able to uh, basically create more um, revenues out of uh, as and when we become market leaders uh, in a particular segment. So just last question from my side. So, you know, we, we last call also we have discussed about uh, uh, from an investor's point of view, whichever exchange gives the base rate, uh, uh, even, even the authorities are also trying to push the same mandate. Uh, can you give us some update on that, where exactly we have reached us? Where do you see that that shaping up in a time to come? Please? Although the regulation is uh, more than 25 years old, it has not been implemented in its uh, true sense. Uh, and so the SEBI has uh, uh, been talking with uh, exchanges on how to implement uh, along with vendors and some regulations are uh, being formed. At some point in time, uh, those regulations will be uh, announced and uh, exchanges and brokers will have to follow that. Currently, uh, it is still far away, but uh, BSE will continue to push for that, like what BSE did for the of uh, uh, clearing corporations, which took uh, more than uh, 12 years to uh, be announced. And still, uh, many brokers have not been able to fully implement due to their uh, vendors, software vendors not able to uh, comply with those kind of uh, uh, situations, or they have partially fulfilled uh, not fully, that is real time may still not happen in certain brokers um, because uh, they have, uh, their vendors are not able to create uh, uh, those softwares and so on and so forth.
So uh, these are all work in progress. And uh, uh, in all these areas where uh, thousands of brokers have to change their software, millions and uh, millions of their customers have to also learn how to use it. So these are all things which sometimes take longer than what we anticipate. Got it, sir. Thank you. Thank you for the update and wish you all the best. Thank you, Thank you sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prayesh Jain from Utila Loswal. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good evening, sir. Congratulations on a great set of numbers. Uh, firstly, a bookkeeping question. What would be the owned cash uh, for DSC uh, on its book at the end of March? Owned cash uh, for BSC or BSC group? BSC group. BSC group. Oh, Nayan? Yeah, so for BSC group, it would be around 2200 crores. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks. That's very good. Also, secondly, I would want your views on uh, uh, how the cash trading segment uh, uh, volumes will pan out. Uh, you know, given the margin rules are now behind, uh, how how do you see this uh, segment panning out going ahead? The cash segment, our uh, percentage volumes are increasing over the last one, one and a half years. And uh, with interoperability and waste price execution uh, becoming more prevalent going forward, uh, we believe that uh, BSC will continue to gain market share. Uh, uh, in equity derivatives, we have not been able to gain traction. And that's why we have been providing liquidity announcement scheme. That is true with uh, commodities also, uh, that we have not been able to get uh, as much traction as we want. And uh, hopefully, uh, going forward with our uh, um, excellent technology and better products, people would uh, prefer to trade on BSC in equity derivatives and commodities also. But till the time we gain traction, we'll have, con we'll have to continue to be in the market to uh, basically provide an alternative. And as and when it becomes more successful, then we will uh, probably start charging. Currently, we do not have plans to uh, charge. Of, of course, in commodities, we have started charging small amounts uh, recently. But in equity derivatives, uh, we, in, in both areas, we continue to have some sort of liquidity enhancement scheme going forward. So, but in spite of the liquidity enhancement scheme, we haven't seen any material change on the derivative side. So, what else can you do apart from, from the liquidity enhancement scheme to ensure that we see some improvement on the market share in terms of derivatives? A base price execution could be a very important aspect of, uh, when. Uh, because we have a lot of orders that come into our market every day, even in uh, equity derivatives. But the trades don't happen because uh, even uh, stock options, which are common for both, uh, people are not used to passing on their orders, not the brokers or investors. And that's where once the base price execution come into play, then uh, automatically the orders will pass on to the venue, which provides better uh, uh, prices. And uh, in many cases, it could be BSE. So once the orders start coming in, then the matching happens and so on and so forth. So those are the things we are working on. And of course, new products, uh, if we can develop, then uh, those products also can help us gain some market share. Okay. So the next question is on Star MS. Do you plan to get this entire business into a separate subsidiary or a company which will enable you to uh, you know, monetize it easy, relatively much easily? Somebody asked this question, I think first question was this, and uh, mm -hmm. we will continue to look for opportunities. Uh, and in some ways, uh, the market for uh, Star MF is going so fast that people had never imagined that it would become so uh, dominant uh, at any point in time. And so uh, it remains to be seen what kind of valuation uh, that comes. Uh, if the Star MF platform was standalone sitting in Bangalore, it would be probably uh, sort of quoting in very large values, but it's sitting in Mumbai in Fort uh, and within BSE balance sheet, uh, then uh, it becomes very different. You and I know how these valuations mm -hmm. happen. So uh, we are hopeful, but otherwise it's a profit making venture for us as of now uh, and it's mm -hmm. growing very rapidly. So we are very satisfied. And even if we are not able to separately value it, or separate it out for any other reason. Uh, we are pretty comfortable because it's a profit-making uh, venture uh, for us. Okay, okay. And so my last question is on the uh, some understanding on or some numbers if you can share on the subsidiaries uh, with regards to their growth in revenues and any numbers on profits. 
uh, of the international subsidiary? Uh, basically, I s shared the number in my speech. Uh, currently, uh, uh, it's doing around $10 billion a day transactions, international India in cash exchange. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a mm -hmm. very interesting new business, uh, which is basically through its subsidiary called IMXGA, where uh, people sitting in India or in gift city Gaminagar should be able to trade on any exchange in the world at a mm -hmm. fraction of a cost of our competition. Uh, and that has got a great uh, response. And it's actually uh, a revenue uh, accretive uh, activity. Similarly, our uh, listing of bonds has reached uh, more than $762 billion, out of which $44 billion actually have been collected. Uh, and so uh, some real good action is happening in the India International Exchange, India International Clearing Corporation, and India NX GA, uh, that is called uh, Global Access, India NX Global Access. Uh, and uh, hopefully, uh, as and when more activity starts uh, happening in Gift City, uh, this is pretty much the market uh, that people are looking up to. So any kind of numbers in terms of revenues and uh, bottom line? Uh, it will be part of our uh, uh, framework. Uh, as of now, uh, uh, in uh, I mean, each of them, if you try telling you very many details, it will take probably a few hours or even more. Uh, so, <laughs> okay. uh, But uh, in some ways, some portion of that will be in there in the annual uh, report also. So sure. you might be able to take a look at it. And lastly, sir, uh, you know, what is the status on the appointment of the new uh, CEO? The process is on. Uh, there is a separate committee uh, which has been set up uh, under the SEBI regulations where uh, three uh, uh, nomination and remuneration committee members of VSC, all of them are uh, independent directors and the two outside experts uh, is approved by SEBI, have been uh, sort of running this process. I am personally not aware, uh, nor I get involved in uh, that process, but the process uh, I've been told is on a track and uh, uh, in some ways uh, it will uh, complete uh, sooner than expected. All right, thank you so much, all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ankit, an individual investor, please go ahead. Ankit, your line is in talk mode, kindly proceed with your question. Uh, seems like we lost the connection for the current participant. We move to the next question from the line of Pratik Rati, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, congratulations, team, on the great set of results. So I just wanted to know some more details about, uh, say, the revenue breakup, if you could give me the income from IPOs, which we generated in the previous quarter, and the income from the Star Mutual Fund platform for this quarter. And then, uh, do we uh, provide this? So, uh, uh, what I can say is that the amount of revenue which we have got from book building uh, in the previous quarter, and uh, that amount is already given in the presentation, and I'll just read it out to you for your convenience. Uh, it is uh, nine crores which we earned in the last quarter. For the full year, we have uh, uh, we have actually earned about 35 crores, about 51 crores. No, sorry, uh, it's uh, I'll just check you know. So this is primarily because of IPO. 65.8 crores. Yeah, it is there in the presentation also. It's in page section of the presentation. So book building fees is basically received uh, uh, at the time of IPOs. Obviously, uh, the listing income also comes along with uh, new IPOs, but the major component is book building, which immediately comes into a revenue. Okay. And the revenue from Star Mutual Fund, will you be able to quantify that? Page 15. Yeah, it's already there in the page 15 of our presentation. It's 50 crores for the current year, 50.4 oh. crores. Okay, 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 fine. And uh, again, you know, coming to the main question, which I think many of the earlier investors have already questioned, regarding the star valuation of Star Mutual Fund platform. So I think in one of the news channels, it was mentioned that the valuation is roughly between 9,000 to 10,000 crores. So I'm, I know it's, you know, getting into detail is too much, but is that round figure around that, or if you can give some comment regarding that? No, we do not have any such idea. Uh, people uh, uh, basically figure out themselves, and uh, <laughs> that is basically doable by anyone. Okay, okay, sir. That's it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Chandra from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. 
so my uh, my question is on the transaction charges so you know if you see the most of the growth for the transaction charges has been has been driven from the special rate which is now 44% of transaction charges and uh, you know there has been you know like significant growth there so you know that is you know he, uh, the highly you know like market linked so how do you see that panning out so you know just like linked to that and the annual listing fees also if you can provide I you know the breakup between what is the you know breakup in of you know listing fees uh, from you know uh, you know exclusive and non-exclusive companies uh, you know that we have on BSC and are we planning to have a special rate for the exclusive uh, you know uh, you know the listed companies uh, on BSC you know similar to the, uh, you know like what we have been doing on transaction side. The specific listing charges are there. Specific uh, trading uh, charges are also there for exclusively registered companies, which are an, uh, announced, and uh, we charge that. In terms of numbers, uh, Nayan should be able to give you easily, and should be there in the presentation. Yeah. So the annual listing fees uh, totally uh, for the uh, is given in page 16 of the presentation. It is 156 crores for financial year 21-22. And uh, means uh, we don't have a breakup of uh, the company. Means uh, the different types of company-wise uh, listing currently. Uh, but this is the one which is generally constant. If you see year on year, uh, we 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 continue at between 150 to 160 crores. No, so this is just a sense in the sense that is, is there uh, no uh, huge difference in terms of the rates that we're charging for exclusive non-exclusive on the annual listing side, or is it the same? There is some difference, not huge difference. There are some minor differences. Okay. So, are you planning something to have you know, similar structure that we have a transition side or the annual listing side also? I mean, currently, okay. currently we do not have. Currently we do not have. Okay, okay, okay. And uh, you know, secondly, on the you know the currency you know, derivative and uh, on the you know you know uh, normal derivative side, we have seen some you know early success, but again. You know the market share has been coming off. So is it uh, you know is it because of uh, you know the market conditions or is it because the initiative that we took has not worked or you know, if you can you know actually throw some more color on what has not worked there? It is largely because of market conditions um, and uh, remains to be seen. Some of the players uh, are now testing the algo players and all. So if they join in, probably you might see some increase, but uh, that remains to be seen. So earlier we were having certain special contracts or uh, the special India 50 index kind of a thing which actually picked off really well. So uh, has something changed there or uh, it's just the market conditions as you said? Yeah, I believe it's more to do with market conditions. Okay. So in terms of market share, we expect that to remain in that range only, sir, or we expect that? In case uh, some of these uh, algo traders uh, based execution price um, the real-time uh, interoperability uh, comes into play for most brokers and it might change for kind of a better uh, on a long-term basis, sustainable basis. Okay. And sir, uh, you know, on the INX side, so as you said, we are having a dominant market share there and uh, you know, the volumes are also picking up uh, around 1.8 lakh trades per day for the last quarter. So, you know, uh, actually, you know, we have been doing well there. But uh, you know, uh, in the earlier call, you mentioned that uh, you know NSC is also planning. I you know uh, they are also tying with SGX and uh, a, a, you know some SG, SGX related contract can also come in. So, is that a risk uh, to uh, the INS market share? Uh, you know, that's why we are not charging, or uh, still it's pretty immature as of now. You see, you know, charge on INX. So, so from when we can expect the revenue from INX? The revenue from INX continues uh, in terms of the listing fees, in terms of INX GFEs, which are uh, slowly increasing. So uh, revenue also continues, uh, but we also need to develop a market uh, because we need to attract brokers uh, to uh, give city. We need to attract investors to give city from abroad uh, and so on and so forth. So it's a, a longish process uh, and uh, probably it will continue for some time. But uh, if SGX comes, uh, it remains to be seen. It is already five years uh, since X SGX has not come, but hopefully uh, that will also happen. And uh, it remains to be seen how uh, uh, we are able to do it. But the only tie-up they have is for the index trading. 
uh, not for bonds, not for equity, not for foreign equity, and so on and so forth. So it remains to be seen how uh, people are able to take it. Currently, we are the uh, largest uh, market, as you rightly said, uh, with 92% market share. And hopefully, we should be able to defend our market share going forward. In terms of regulatory approvals, uh, all the reg you know, regulatory approvals are through for NSE to launch the SGX thing or still some regulatory approval is still pending? We are not aware. Uh, we are not aware of what all they require. Okay. Okay, sir. And uh, uh, thank you. And uh, all the best for the next year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the lineup, Ranav Tucker, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Thank you for the opportunity again. Uh, and uh, my question is uh, related to Star MF uh, again. Uh, sir, at least um, since we already own uh, this excellent uh, franchisee, we must be having some valuation in mind because when we are talking to the investors, I can understand that you know there could be the uh, variation in terms of uh, what exactly uh, investor is looking to uh, invest for but what is the minimum valuation or your expectation that which you know uh, uh, you are expecting to get it we are currently not having any such numbers in our mind whatever is reasonable and whatever uh, is justifiable to our board and to our shareholders that time we will see currently we do not have any specific uh, sort of proposal uh, with us uh, from anyone. Uh, so it would be more uh, what I call in the realm of imagination. And uh, as and when something comes, we'll take it to the board. Yeah, but sir, uh, the thing is, you already mentioned that, you know, since it is not based in Bangalore, you will not get uh, the valuation uh, as uh, the companies in Mumbai and uh, so so at least you must be having a fair idea of what exactly could be on the valuation. I can understand that there could be, if you can say uh, in terms of multiple, because Star MF already had uh, 50 crores of uh, uh, profits. So whatever multiples. Yeah, we, we have no idea because we don't uh, invest in such uh, high growth uh, platforms. I mean, it's a platform. Uh, and uh, it's a profitable platform, one of the rare uh, e-commerce platforms in India, which is profitable also. It remains to be seen how um, uh, sort of how it is valued uh, going forward. We do not have much of an idea. And sir, uh, finally on uh, the power exchange, like PTC is also there uh, as one of the uh, investors. So what percentage of the volume we are uh, looking to get it uh, because PTC right now is trading on IEX. Correct. So what 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 percentage of the volume we are going to, trying to get it? Again, it remains to be seen. But uh, this is one market where uh, PTC is a large player, and uh, our other partner ICC Bank also has. Uh, uh, basically inroads into many, many uh, companies which are users or producers. And so we hope to capture a good market share going forward, but it remains to be seen once we launch. I, I read somewhere that PTC is doing about 30% of the volume of IEX. So, so straightforward that volume can uh, get on the PSC platform. We, we have... Uh, hopes to do that, but uh, ultimately it remains to be seen how it works out. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pratiksha, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thanks for taking my question again. I have seen the presentation on the slide where you have mentioned the red ocean business and the blue ocean business. I've seen that in the blue ocean business, we are gaining the, we have high market share. But for in the red ocean business, as you have, have mentioned that we are gaining the market share in the equity cash segment. But for other 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 businesses, what are our strategy to increase the market share? Is there any, any plan or you are doing any strategy to increase the market share in the red ocean businesses? Uh, that's what uh, we mentioned about equities, equity derivatives, currency derivatives. 
interested derivatives. We have uh, in equity derivatives and commodity derivatives, we have uh, incentive schemes that is going on. We also uh, provide uh, a technology support to uh, many people. We also have a, a free um, uh, BOW BOW platform that is available for people to trade on any exchange. Uh, but we hope that once people get used to our platforms, they'll uh, want to pass on more orders to us. So we try many such things uh, using our technological expertise and a very low cost technology to attract people onto the BSE uh, as well as uh, provide incentives to trade on um, BSE where SEBI allows us to do. So those are the things uh, which we are, uh, whatever we, because this is a very highly regulated business and we are ourselves front-time regulators. Uh, we cannot do many things which the uh, normal uh, businesses which you are used to um, watching uh, are able to do. We, we are allowed to do only very, very few things, allowed to trade only in few instruments. Any instrument uh, we come out with or propose has to go through many, many uh, sort of approvals, uh, committees, uh, public comments, and so on and so forth before they are approved. And they are approved usually for every exchange. So uh, there is no inherent uh, product which is like um, where you can um, uh, have a monopoly. It's allowed to almost all exchanges. And that's where uh, basically we have to fight it out. Uh, in some areas, we were left behind, which is what uh, when they were launched. That's why we call it Red Ocean. Uh, some we launched recently, where we have good market share over last 10, 12 years. They have become also Red Ocean. But there we have better market share than uh, uh, previous businesses. Uh, and the new business we are launching where uh, we are uh, not competing with the traditional rivals, but we are competing with insurance companies or agricultural portals. And um, at trades also, currently there are two, three exchanges already running. Um, and KYC KRA also, there are uh, three, four agencies running. So effectively, we'll be uh, basically competing with newer um, uh, newer uh, competitions uh, in those businesses. That's how I see that. There is no business which doesn't have competition, but uh, the regulatory contours uh, in those businesses are much, uh, uh, what I call, um, um, much less um, strict compared to the uh, the equities and equity derivatives or currency markets are, which are our traditional bread and butter markets. Uh, and those are like highly regulated, highly tightly regulated uh, markets. So right. each market has its own uh, sort of dynamics and we have to play within that, within the rules of the game that the regulator defined for us. Yeah, got it, sir. And uh, the second question on the star MS, uh, uh, many have asked, but just want a clarification from you. I mean, is there any plan to launch as an IPO to list this uh, separate star mutual fund? Currently, no, we do not have that plan. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As there are no further questions, I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anand Seturaman for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for, for participating. And thank you, Stephen, for uh, coordinating. We can close the call now. Thank you. Thank you, and have a nice evening, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of BSE Limited, that concludes this conference. We thank you all thank for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.